Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Apologies, I was, I, I sat down, I'm like, all right, I'm getting ready. I look up and it's 12.01, so I saw, <laughs> I thought it was right on time. All right, welcome, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, we ready for today? So here's what we got, guys. Hopefully you are ready to take, um, let me see. V, do me a favor, keep an eye on people, and you always do a great job, so I'm not uh, calling her out, and if you guys can, you know, round of applause or quick little comment in the chat section, thanking V and, and uh, my amazing assistants for all the work they do, they're absolutely fantastic, help make all this uh, possible, so I appreciate everything you do, but keep an eye on, on waiting room for me, we got a lot of content here to go over, so... Last couple of days, uh, for those of you guys that have been here, we've talked a little bit about social media in general. So on, um, on Wednesday, we talked a little bit about Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok, uh, and YouTube, right? Talked a little bit about all of those. Just kind of generalizations, what the audience is, take a look at that. We're talking about creating content, creating your brand, you know, the benefits of different platforms. The funnel that Blake's got built up, Works exceptionally well for Facebook. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Can it work if you put the link on Instagram? Yes. Does some of this work if you, you approach it the right way on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Can you build up a YouTube channel and then post your link in there and get people working that way? Yes, you can. Yes to all of it, right? You may need to make some minor adjustments, but social media works in a number of different ways. So there is a way to build your audience because ultimately that's what you need to do to increase your credibility, increase your reach, generate leads, make money, right? That good with overall description? We saw it there. Yes? Okay. So we've got a lot of content to go over. I was planning on trying to fit um, everything into today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, if you guys are okay with that. I'm going to be going over a lot of different stuff about generating organic traffic, um, generating leads organically. Today, I'm going to be focused on Facebook. We're going to go over a lot of stuff. Some of this is going to be introductory, okay? Um, and it just kind of based on some questions, some feedback I had, I felt like this was what was going to serve the majority of you better. I realized some of you may be further along, and that's okay. Hopefully, you gain something out of this. Um, and if not, if you are a social media pro already, that's okay. You know, rock and roll. But... We're going to go over some stuff. Guys, don't feel afraid to ask questions. I promise if you guys have questions, someone else is asking the same thing um, and they're just being too shy. Uh, no one on here will judge. We're, it's a, it's a safe, this is a safe space. We are all protected here um, most of the time, unless I get on a tirade and, and then I'm just attacking everybody. But you guys know I like it. So on that note, um, we're, we're going to be talking about Social media, we're getting into Facebook. So I'm going to share a little bit from now, guys, uh, as a side note, I will share. So the recording will be posted on the, the Google Doc uh, a little bit later. If you need the Google Drive with the recordings, get in touch with your accountability representative. Um, the slides for this I'll make available on Monday because there's going to be a lot of stuff um, there. And V, actually, I can make them available over the weekend so you guys can study them. V, if you can make a list, email list of everybody. And then we'll all share the, uh, the Google Drive or the, the uh, slides after this call. Okay? You good there? All right. So, guys, um, if you have a question, drop it into chat or uh, raise your – well, raising your hand won't really do much because I can't see it because I'm on my screen. So, a couple of quick things um, I talked about before. Let me just kind of roll through some of these slides real quick again. Organic reach is the number of people who see your content without paid distribution. Paid reach is the people who see it because I'm paying for it, right? That's pretty straightforward. Um, organic, there are two major reasons Facebook organic reach has been declining. Is be one is there's so much content. One is the way that they're um, personalized, the news feeds, and really because they want you to pay for it. They really prefer that you pay for that stuff. So um, there's a lot of different factors that they use to decide what shows up on someone's newsfeed, right? How recently it was published, how frequently you post, the number of likes, comments, and shares, how often, you know, 
Rachel or Nancy's interacting with my post will determine how often they see it. Right. Um, if you're interact, if you interact with the same types of posts that other people are posting, right. All of those things. Okay. One thing is don't automate every single thing. You want to be human with it. Although automation inevitably is something that we almost all use or need. Um, a lot of them should be social, Brand story posts, authority building posts, on and on and on. Okay, here we go. Building organic traffic. First way to do that, you start by building your presence and authority. Now, how do I start to build that up? We're going to go over a number of different things, okay? Um, when I'm adding social contacts, what they're talking about is just reacting to and engaging with the audience, um, you know, understanding your audience, Understanding your audience is a huge factor in your credibility because it, and it will increase your influence because it's you paying attention to what's going on with hopefully your target audience, right? So I did a training before on target audience, selecting an audience, having it based on your niche. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, but it's not just the page likes. Okay. Um, your content will perform based on how well you engage with the audience, Right. Build enough authority to command your audience to action. This means that they're going to engage more favorably. Now, what am I talking about here? Part of this is attracting the right kind of people. You can't try and please everybody when it comes to your audience. Okay. You are not trying to sell to everybody. You're trying to sell to your audience. And, and I can't emphasize that enough. If you try and attract everybody, if you're too generalized in your content, it's not going to matter. Random fans are useless because random fans won't benefit from what I'm saying, what I'm selling, how I'm engaging. They won't, it, it will affect you. Like you could have a, and that's part of what I was talking about the other day when I talk about buying likes um, that are too broad. You can run a campaign through your ad manager. You can run a campaign for likes, but do it in a targeted fashion. Uh, targeted fashion. You want people to engage that fall into your audience. That way, the content you publish will be more relevant. And then it'll be more likely to show up in their news feeds because you match other things that they already follow. Questions about that? Thoughts about that? comments am i making sense we're talking both david we're talking both he's saying are we talking biz not personal um again your business is how you'll run an ad um and how you can retarget your posts but I would do both. Like eventually you're going to have some people that like your page as well, but there's, there's no reason to not just target that same audience. Ultimately we're talking more business because in that regards, you're going to have um, more people looking at, you know, what you're trying to offer and that'll be done through your business side, but that's kind of how that flows. So, okay. Um, did that? Oh, I guess I, just duplicate that. All right. So we start by creating our presence and authority. We have, we have to have a, a strong brand presence. Now, if your brand is watered down, chances your audience will be too. What does that mean? How do I, how do I create a strong brand? What would be the difference between a strong brand or a watered down brand? Just kind of an explanation. What would you guys think if I say, Hey, your brand's kind of watered down. What does that mean? Your niche is too wide. Too broad. Too wide, too broad. So that's my niche, right? So my audience is too broad. And so my message becomes too broad. And I'm just posting stuff that's not relevant to anything, right? You've got to be strategic. You've got to be thoughtful about what you're doing. Now, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to do that. But this starts with your audience. This is why when we talk about selecting a niche, we say, hey, you should select a niche that you either like or you're, you know, if you're passionate about it, great. If you've got a background with it, better. If it's something that you're willing to talk about, awesome. Um, 
David, I'm not sure what you mean by cross-reference. Cross-reference what? So what you want to do is, um, and I realize I may have just said, oh, business to personal. If you're posting, you know, joining certain groups may be from your personal page. And so people will end up looking at your personal as well. I would just personally, I don't know how many times I can say personal in, in two sentences, but personally, I would build my personal page in accordance with my overall <clears throat> brand, my overall message. Guys, human capital, human branding is now the world that we're in. Now that happens through text. It happens through words. It happens through spoken language, you know, podcasts, videos, videos will, and we'll touch on this later, but videos will outperform text every single day of the week. And some of you guys are saying, well, I never want to be on video. Okay. Well then, you know, animated video or images with voiceover or closed caption will perform better than other ones. But if that's the way you're going to do it, then it better be on point as well as far as your brand message, not just general, you know, some people, and I don't know if anybody has done this. So if you've done this, please understand, I'm not attacking you. I'm talking about the action. Some people build out their personal or their business page and they post you know, those silly, almost like the, the gifs that you can text people that say good morning. And it's like the, the super poor quality animation. There's like sparkles and there's silly cartoons that sitting there like in flowers. They're saying good morning. And it's just kind of, we're sitting there with a cup of coffee. Do you, get, you, you guys seen those? Like you would text to, you know, I would send that to my mom kind of thing. Like, that's not how you engage with your audience, guys. But I'm telling them good morning. No, you're not. People are going to look at that and do you ever look at that and go, man, that's some quality graphics. That's who I want to help me with my marketing. In general, when you post something, think about how your audience is going to perceive that, right? We talked about this the other day, the assumptions, right? With the, when we were talking about the four agreements, what you think, what they think somewhere in the middle, right? Because it doesn't matter if you like it. The only thing that matters in this case is your message to your audience and how they perceive that. And if that's going to induce them to continue to engage with you and eventually create a relationship because people will buy from who they know, like, and trust. And if they know, like, and trust me, then I can offer them something that is of value to them. And through my sales funnel that is constantly going on, I want you guys to understand everything that you do on your page is kind of a part of your sales funnel. We build this funnel out, you know, Blake's got the funnel built out, the partner program, and you guys are taking advantage of it. All of the stuff that you do is considered top of funnel. All of the stuff that you do creates engagement with an audience that will come in through the funnel, right? So your, your message has got to be on point. You're a marketer. You're digital entrepreneurs. You know how to connect with an audience. Let me show you how to do that, right? So where, where do you learn some of that stuff? Part of it's from reading. Maybe you should read some books. Once you've been on a couple of my calls, you'll understand I kind of harp on that point from time to time. But you guys should be reading. It, I promise it will be beneficial for you as you're going about your marketing. Okay? So if you're not specific, your brand is, is too generalized, you won't connect with the audience. Right? So let me go ahead and keep rolling. Um, you want it to, you want a brand that image that sticks in, in the mind. So your brand image isn't just your logo guys, it's you. And then you're constantly reinforcing that message. Okay. Next, some information that can be used to construct your persona, right? And what I mean is the, the persona, your target audience, this should be their persona, right? So I did a whole training on target audience before. So this is kind of reemphasizing some of that. You cannot be politically correct when it comes to this, guys. Again, I said it before, but please, like this is, I've got to understand my target audience. How do they identify, right? Gender, age, background, location, occupation. All of those are data points. It's just statistics, right? That's it. You can then flesh it out. So what are their pain points? What are their interests? So the pain point is what? You guys remember if you've, gone and you've seen it back in November, I did a branding and direct response marketing. I've talked about it on a couple of different things. I talk about something called a market dominating position. I don't know if any of you guys remember this. A market dominating position is essentially you coming in and understanding 
it's a, a phrase or kind of the, a mission statement almost, if you will, another word for it that, or another phrase that some people identify with is a unique selling point or unique selling position. A market dominating position is understanding from your target audience what they have, but they don't want. And in turn, what they want, but they don't have. Your message consistently to businesses is to help, is to express to them, I understand what you have, but you don't want. What you have is an empty store. What you have are mounting bills. What you have are technicians that aren't working. What you have is a need, you know, a need for customers. So I understand what you have, but you don't want. And, and I understand what you want, but don't have. I understand that you want a full schedule, but you don't have it yet. I understand that you want customers and you want to get them from social media and you can't figure it out. I understand that you want to be proficient in generating leads using Facebook, but you haven't learned how to do that yet. I can help you learn that. That's what you're doing with this, guys. And, and really, these products will do that. And if you learn some of this too, you're essentially, I mean, understand what you're doing. This isn't just you making money. If you guys take this on as a mission and go above and beyond and you go, I'm going to help make an impact on some businesses in this niche because I'm passionate about it. And I know some of you I've talked to that absolutely have that vision. You know, I'm, I'm after helping minority-based businesses, women-based businesses, um, you know, contractors that are struggling right now. I, I'm trying to help people that are in the homeopathic space that are trying to get customers and they're struggling. Some of you guys are passionate about it. And if you look at it, if you can help them generate customers, you're going to help save businesses. You're going to put food on the table in other people's lives if you can deliver this product. So you should put yourself on a mission to get this in front of the right people, right? That should be your reason. Like, man, if I can connect with my audience, I can make a difference in their lives. That's what you guys have the capability of doing. That's what these products can do. Occasionally that should get you a little fired up. So there's some um, points to look at. Now, what else can I do? I'm going to target the demographic when I boost or I promote my post. Now, I'm not big on boosting unless you target it. Don't just boost for the sake of boosting. If you're going to boost without targeting your audience, without understanding who your audience is, like I, I've said before, if you're going to boost without targeting your audience, I'll send you my PayPal. You can just send me the cash. If you're going to boost and you're going to target and go after the audience that you should, then yes, I can you know, create that custom audience. Model it after your ideal persona, your target audience, your customer avatar, right? That way you're going to reach the right people. The likes campaigns need to be targeted. So what I'm saying is you guys on your business page, you're going to create a post, a video, an article, you know, text, something. You can run a campaign through your ad manager for likes, now, the purpose of that would be I'm going to target my audience that I would normally target. Attorneys, financial planners. I'm going to target them because I've got a cool video about you know, financial planners. I'm going to talk about what we were talking about yesterday, everything that's going on with Robinhood and GameStop and all of this nonsense. Hey, here's my take on it. And here's how you can act, you know, efficiently use this to generate more customers for yourself, right? So I'm going to create this. I'm going to create a post and I'm going to target my audience, right? So I can generate likes because if I can generate likes, maybe I get some overflow into followers for my page because I'm going to get them to like that article and hopefully they come over to the page. Does that part make sense? Does everyone understand you in the ad manager, you can create a post on your page and then you can create a likes campaign. Now, what do you do with that? Right? What can you actively do? Okay. So, you can then, once you've created that like campaign, you get all of these likes, then you can come to this little piece on your Facebook page. You go, oh, these people liked it. You can then invite them to like your actual business page. So now they've engaged with the post. You've invited them to like your page as well. A lot of times they will. 
But even if you get a handful every time you do this, slowly that builds the audience and you know it's targeted because you've done your research. And when you launch that boost campaign, that targeted campaign, you targeted people that fit into your niche. Okay. So I'm not going step-by-step step how to do this. You know, there's some videos to do it that you can find out how to do that. It, there's pretty straightforward, but again, this is kind of how Facebook pulls this data up, right? Let me make this a little bigger. Okay. Creating a custom audience on Facebook. This is how you do it. The Facebook has these data, this data, the partner categories are like the interests and the other stuff that's there. And then you have the data that, that you've got, because people start making purchases, you've created your customer avatar. And this is kind of what that looks like, right? So I can create then a custom audience and I can use that custom audience for my, my boosted campaign or my likes campaign and things like that. I'm not going to walk you through exactly how to set up a custom audience on this because you'd have to jump into like the background and Facebook and everything. We've got some training in the dashboard. There's more training within um, Accelerator. I can't pull up my chat for some reason. There we go. Um, would you message them to thank them for liking the page? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, just occasionally on the page or in a video, say, hey, thanks for liking my page, appreciate it. You know, appreciate all the new likes or all, all you new people that are here following. I want to make sure I provide blah, blah, blah. Just keep building your brand um, because at some point, if you want to at the beginning, that's fine. But at some point, it's just going to become, hopefully it becomes overwhelming. Hopefully, you know, you don't want to have to send, you know, 80 new likes a day, 80 new messages a day saying thanks for liking my page. At least not at the beginning. Now, that's taking into consideration i'm not going in depth on um something like many chat or a bot you guys know what a chat bot is so you you have facebook messenger right and if you have a business page people can message you you can message them if they've liked your page you can set up something that's called a, a chat bot which and you can create kind of a flow of chat back and forth to engage. It's a great way to do it. It's awesome for engagement. It's great to then take them from that chat into a, you know, to your link for your funnel. But setting all of that up is, is a lot more in-depth training. And, um, and I'm not getting into it on, on one of these calls. It's just, it's too much. You can do it. It's a call. It, There's a cost to it. There's a lot of value if you do it. Say again. Andrew, uh, yeah. we do have a chat box uh, option in Blake's Spartan program. So are we talking about the same one? It would be the same type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Chat bots, chat bots are great. I'm just not diving into it here because it's, okay. too, it's too much to try and, and dive through. So yeah, add it to the landing page. Yeah. Any way that you can create kind of that conversation. And here's the thing. Sometimes people are like, well, but it's a bot and it's not precise and People don't like that. Okay, but people are used to it too. Has anybody never had a, a chat conversation that's kind of automated to take you at least to one step or another? Everybody's done it, right? Now we're doing it on, on text like this through Facebook, but you've all done it before. Please press one to, for English and two for Spanish. You know, let me get the last four of your card numbers so I can get you to the right department. I mean, we all we all do it, but it but it is exactly, Anthony. We may not like it, but it's expected and we understand it, right? So if I can get a couple of things out of the way and 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 your customer understands this as well, your businesses understand it. Hey, if I can get to the right place, then it's okay, right? It does take work to set them up, but they can be very effective, all right? So next. Evergreen content. You've got to be strategic about the content that you post. You have put a little thought into it. So I've talked about this before, time that you spend on it, guys, plan on time that you're spending on your funnel and everything else. You're looking at one to two, three hours a day. You'll split that up morning and afternoon. Part of this should be planning on the content I'm going to post. I'm not just posting random stuff. 
my goal is always to post some kind of content that's evergreen. And there's a number of different, you know, evergreen means something that will last, right? A topics or, or some kind of um, content that I can either use over and over and over again, or that they will engage with over and again. Okay. So you want to keep it fresh. You want to keep in front of them. But if I can publish something that will affect people now and later, and this is why understanding my target audience is so important. Guys, if you want to create an organic reach, understanding who you're marketing to is essential. You'll never build an organic following without understanding who your target audience is. I did the other training um, back in December about target audience. I'll do one upcoming on, on some research that you can do and ways that you can figure out more about them different places that you can look that you may not have, have even thought about. But if I can understand it, I'll get there, right? That's also part of what I've talked about before when it'll help you understand the power teams, the joint ventures that you can create. If I can understand the joint venture partners, their businesses as well, man, the value that you bring to the table when you start a partnership like that. And, and then it gives you more content to interact with your customer base. All right, so here's a simple process for repurposing evergreen content. So if I post something that does really well, I'm gonna find a way to reuse it or redo a topic that's like it, right? Maybe keep track of it on a spreadsheet in Google Docs, keep yourself organized, look at it from a different angle. You know, again, so the video content here that I said earlier, Keep in mind that video content can outperform the same content. Okay. Occasionally, text will do better, but it's rare. Normally, it's video, but it doesn't mean you can't test it. I've done a video, and then I've taken the script from that video and edited it some, cleaned it up a little bit, and posted it as kind of a long-form uh, post. And it did well in that way. So you know, testing it out is, is important. Okay. Try different times during the day. Don't just post at 8 AM every single morning. Find out when your audience is active. Okay. Here's some ideas on other people's evergreen content. Here are things that you can do that will, people will typically engage in. These are things that people like. These are things that um, you can post over and over and over again. I can post a video about this. I can do, you know, I mean, all of this stuff. Here are some ideas that you can use, especially when they are with my target audience. So industry-specific stats, you know, ask them, to, you know, one out of five or, you know, four out of five financial advisors find that blah, 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 blah what do you agree or disagree why right like testimonials for you um ask them q a like all of this stuff these are different ideas for content if you do one of these each day that's what yeah we'll get these slides i'm going to get them we're going to get the email out today um can you create a slide with the process uh hold on uh, should we hashtag to drive the right audience to the page? Sometimes it, it, I wish I could say yes every single time. Uh, hashtags on Instagram, um, but you don't want to overwhelm with hashtags either. You don't want to be silly and have like 80 hashtags that have nothing to do with everything. Um, and it depends on the platform. Different platforms have different things. You do want keywords are always important. Um, the it's slides kind with of the hashtags, right? Uh, 30 is said to be the max and uh, usually they say do the ones that are between 5,000 uh, to five, half a million or a million optimally but it just goes so much like this so if you have friends who can support you and save your posts for example that matters more recently saves even more than initial See? engagement Saves, so it really changes. saves and yeah, it, and each platform is a little bit different. So saves, shares, comments, 
you know, but we're looking at not just reaching everybody. I want to reach my target and I want them to engage on purpose, right? So friends are important, sure, or are helpful. I don't want to say important. They're helpful. It's nice. But unless your friends are buying your shit, it doesn't matter. Honestly. It's like, uh, Unle- you call, uh, for example, I call a few people sometimes on like, would you like uh, save on Instagram and write something just within first uh, crucial amount of time so that more people who are relevant see later on my content. Because that's, uh, that's what a lot of Instagrammers do, whether they say it or not. Uh, well, that, right, uh, but so, we but always so here's... Follow, uh, so to yeah. get more reach for relevant people later, and uh, we over time build relationships with proper people. But sometimes you know people like for a good amount of time, but you re- it really pays off uh, in time. So uh, long term, kind of, uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. There's it's it's a short term fix that may not give you many results as far as cash, right? Because ultimately, guys, that's that's what matters. Having a big following. Um, that doesn't engage isn't going to be super effective. I'd rather have, you know, 5,000 followers that are engaged and, and a percentage of them buy my stuff when I put it out there versus a hundred thousand followers that don't. And there's, there's so many examples of this. There, one of the, um, you know, I, I do e-commerce still and, and I taught e-commerce before, but there was a, there's an influencer um, and all of you guys have seen them, you know, everyone knows what an influencer is they've got or what they call themselves. They've got a certain amount of followers. Well, even a follower with a lot of engagement doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to translate into revenue. So an easy example is there was a, an understanding you, your brand message and your audience. And this is why this is important and why all of these things are relevant. So there was a young woman who had a large audience of, I want to say it was like 1.1, 1.2 million followers. Um, And her, she was pretty young. She was 19 to 20. um, And I ended up looking at her profile afterwards. And it was mostly her kind of dancing or being sarcastic and snarky a bit in her, like, I don't know. And she wasn't real connected with the message and an audience, right? So she decided though, that she had a ton of followers. She was going to launch a clothing brand. Well, she launched this clothing brand and she didn't even do it the right, like instead of doing print on demand stuff, she, she bought a a MOQ, which is a minimum order quantity. The, the type of clothing didn't really fit her audience and her audience wasn't one that would engage in that type of commerce anyway right she launched this brand spent a bunch of money and she sold something like 20 shirts like and that's it 1.1 1.2 million followers and she sold nothing and she came on and she was upset in her stories and crying about it and it, it turned into this big thing because and really it it's because she didn't understand anything about marketing she didn't understand her audience you know, she tried to launch clothing, didn't have anything to do with her audience. It it was a huge disconnect. There's a big difference in a large audience and trying to appease to a general group and one that's super targeted and engaged and understands that I've got a message. They engage with that message. And because of that message, they grow to know, like, and trust me. And then I've got something that's going to solve their problems, right? Just having followers. So it's just like going back to the boosting your campaigns for likes. Only do that if it's going to be relevant to who you're targeting, right? Target your audience, okay? It's not a vanity statistic, right? The followers that I have on Instagram right now, I, I haven't engaged in a while. I haven't been promoting there. Um, I will re-engage them. And because they're targeted for the most part, there's at least a percentage that will re-engage. Now, it's been a little while. I haven't been active there because I've been working on some other platforms, focused on LinkedIn, doing some other things but I'll be able to re-engage and there's a percentage of them that will re-engage and I'll be able to offer some stuff to them and I'll generate revenue from it, right? Just like your email list, they're going to be targeted. So I've got to engage with them in that right way. Is that clear? Does that story kind of make sense guys? Um, Yeah. 
let me see, go over hashtags at one point. I believe they don't mean the same. They don't mean the same thing in Facebook and Instagram. I mean, we'll end up talking about them some, both on LinkedIn and Instagram. We'll talk about all of that um, and how to utilize those things later on. Um, so, okay. Last one for today, guys. Uh, because I, I think I've got more, but I'm going to go over it Monday because there's I'm going to make these slides available so you guys can study them today. We'll get the emails out after this. You'll have this here um, and just start thinking, start planning out. All of you guys, if, even if you don't have your um, business pages set up just yet, you can start planning out some of your social media posts. If you do have your business pages set up, you can start planning out and executing on those. Right. So some simple tips, solid visuals, quality pictures and images. And if you're looking for images that you, maybe you want to put a, a quote about your niche, you know, there's places that you can go for um, duty free uh, um, images like that are not copyrighted. Right. That you've, you've got the copyright to be able to use. You know what I'm talking about? And I said duty, D-U-T-Y, not duty. Um, sorry. Uh, don't be too formal. Keep it short and snappy. Keep it, you know, on point. Ask questions that get responses. Be human. Be real. Clear call to action. Um, meaning, and this goes back to, you guys can go back to November 13th and 16th. I did the branding and direct response marketing training where I talked about asking questions that are based on yeah, Pixabay, uh, Pexels is one, P-E-X-E-L-S is one if you want to find images. and But again, don't just do, unless you're doing personal development coaches and online marketing, then absolutely, you know, stuff that's maybe every single day almost, you, you have quotes from people. Because I did that for a while, um, built up my audience pretty well with it for a bit until I got more personal with it on Instagram. But I, you know, I went and, and you can get... Heck, you can go on Fiverr and get, you know, 500 images with a quote already on it for 10 bucks, right? So you don't have to do the work, guys, right? Find different places to do that. And Fiverr is F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Um, I wouldn't worry about it till you're, you're ready to get launched. I wouldn't post just that. You've got to be personal. You've got to be human. Again, this is building human capital, your brand. We talked about Facebook stories, Instagram stories the other day. Use those. Take your post and repost it in the story. Use all that stuff, guys. Um, there are ways to generate leads organically. We're starting to build the foundation here. That's all we're doing, right? I want you to understand the value of it, how to do it. But with all of that, it's, it's the target audience. I'd much rather have a very targeted, specific, engaged audience that's, you know, a thousand people than looking at someone that's a hundred thousand. I mean, I went to, um, I started working with uh, a company a while back. They brought me on to advise on some marketing and things. And um, they had this Facebook page. And he's like, oh, I've got this, you know, I've got a Facebook page that I use for this other thing that I'm just going to bring the audience over here and, and we're going to sell them our products with this. And they were wanting to sell these e-commerce products that they had had with the brand it was beauty products so it was like a, an eye serum and all of this other stuff i'm like well that's that's not gonna work he's like i got five hundred thousand people on that page of course it's gonna work. i'm gonna be sell, able to sell stuff so but it's, it's an audience for something totally different the other audience was for like a, an auction site from a year ago you haven't engaged with them at all they're not going to interact at all he goes so he he placed a bet with me who do you think won that one right he, he posted plenty and, and he had a 500,000 likes on there and he couldn't generate 15 likes on a post. Who the hell cares about the 500,000 likes if nobody's engaged on anything and if, if it doesn't speak to who your audience is? Guys, understand, this is why when we talk about selecting a niche and we talk about, you know, deciding on who you're working with, you know, what type of business you're working with. Occasionally, I get people that say, well, I want to work with, I mean, every business. I want to help any business. So that's great. You're never going to help anybody if that's kind of what you're trying to do. You need to decide on someone. Become that guy. Become that woman in that industry. You know, where everyone is looking at Roslyn going, man, she knows her stuff about this niche. And see, she turned to look at the screen because she heard me say her name. And, you know, now I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm just playing. 
But the point is, guys, select your niche, understand your audience, get in there. It becomes so much easier to create content if all I have to study is one particular thing, right? If that's what I'm studying, all the, like all, I don't have to go, what am I doing now? It's easy to pick that stuff up, right? And then once you get a couple of sources of content that I can repurpose, woo, now my job becomes that much easier. Obviously, put it in your voice. You know, we're not trying to just straight rip people off. But a lot of that content's out there already, guys. All you got to do is take it, tweak it a little bit, make it yours, make it human, make it your voice, and you'll start to connect more and more and more with your audience. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I, uh, we will get you your slides here in just a little bit. Uh, the recording will be posted probably within the hour. You can check that so you can kind of review Take some time this weekend, think about your social media, think about strategies. And, and if you haven't yet, decide on your niche, buy into it, understand, get into your mind that, man, I'm not just going after an audience. I've got a chance to help small businesses, right? I love talking about marketing. I love talking about personal development. I think most of you guys have been on some of these calls. You get that. Like I, I thrive on this kind of stuff. It really excites me. I love it. But the fact that I can help my, my passion, my niche is helping other small businesses. And that came up because my dad was a small business owner that didn't know anything about running a small business. He was a great locksmith, right? And then he and my mom, my mom was a nurse for 35 years. I've mentioned this a few times. They started a small care home. They built a duplex in Prescott Valley, Arizona. They tore out the middle wall and, and they turned it into a small care home. And it was just them. And one of the last conversations that I had with my dad when he was 48, when he passed, one of the last conversations that I had was, he said, Andrew, learn how to be a good manager when you grow up, learn how to run a business, learn how to be a good manager. Your mom and I are great at doing what we have to do. We're great at doing the work, but we suck at running a business. And I remember him telling me that, and it wasn't until I was older and I had been supervisor, manager and all every, every job I ever had, I became a supervisor or a manager because in my mind and in my subconscious, that's what my dad had told me to do. And it wasn't until I had done that for a while until I understood that that didn't mean I was running a business. didn't mean I knew anything about running a business. I mean, man, I just did that work a little bit better and they could pay me less to work more and take on more responsibility. I do this because I want to help small business owners find a way to launch people to take that step to become a business owner. I want to, that's, I love helping you guys do that. Figure out, hey, this is possible. I can get this done. I can learn these skills. Even if you don't have any background, you can learn it. You can overcome the obstacles you've had, you can overcome yourself because oftentimes that's the biggest obstacle you can do some amazing things. And whether those amazing things means you make, you know, a thousand or $2,000 extra a month, or it means that you hit that seven figures. That's great. You know, I want to be part of that journey with you. And all of you guys are capable of it. All of you guys are finding, are capable of finding a way to rise up from the ashes and fly like the Phoenix as you are. Go out and have an amazing day, guys. I will see you on Monday. We'll continue this conversation a little bit. Take care, guys. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.